What's up guys, welcome back to another episode of Coffee and Van Chats. On this episode of Coffee and Van Chats, we chat with Johnny Whale. Johnny Whale is a part of the UCI track trade team, Hoob Watt Bike, chasing World Cup gold and upsetting some of the biggest team pursuit teams that the world has to offer. Hoob Watt Bike has been known for their crazy aerodynamic gains and all the crazy team pursuit formations that they bring to the table. The big controversy lying around Hoob Watt Bike is always, why isn't the national governing body giving them an opportunity to ride for their nation? Well, it looks like Johnny might have that opportunity, so please sit back, relax, and enjoy this episode. This episode is also brought to you by Beetroot Pro. I've been using Beetroot Pro for quite some time now, and honestly, it's the best tasting beetroot powder that I've ever had. It shakes up super well, and it doesn't taste like dirt, and yeah, it works. So check them out at BeerooPro.com. If you haven't already, please make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Other than that, let's get into the episode. All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Coffee and Man Chats. I'm here with the Johnny Whale, who's also known as Chief Morale for Hoob Watt Bike. Um, but yeah, and I, I kind of want to get into that. Like where, where did that even come from? Where does chief morale come from? <clears throat> it's actually the chief morale officer is the chief uh, full morale title. Officer. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> um, it's fine. I let that one slip. Yeah, yeah. I tried to talk to your <laughs> agent beforehand to make sure I didn't screw anything up. God, it's the one, it's the one thing I said every time. Come on guys. Um, uh, we're quite famous on the, in the circuit for, you know, morale. Yeah. Just having a bit of a, having a bit of a laugh, taking the piss at these uh, events, um, and oh, you know, like we we we've said it quite a few times that you know we may not be world class athletes, we may not be you know have the world class budget, facilities, yada yada yada, but we're world class at having fun. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, for sure. And I think that goes a long, long way in performance. Like, you can look at the nerdy side of like, if you're not having fun, you're drained and cortisol, and you're not going to get adaptations from your training and all yeah. this stuff. But like from a point of view of like what we were doing it for originally was we were just four friends that came together that like riding bikes fast having fun yeah. um and it just kind of got carried away and we started doing world cups and stuff but we still kept that original team culture team ethos that was just having fun yeah straight yeah. around man i love it so yeah, yeah. where where does where do you essentially get started like we all know how hoop started we all know that you guys lived together and stayed in the same bed and were a bunch of weirdos but where did you where did you get started in the cycling period um oh it's a long story this one um <clears throat> i've always I've, I've not really raced much as like as a history I and mean, I've, I've said that in quite a few times in interviews mm -hmm. and now we're three years late and i'm still saying the same thing but um i would say like you know i'm a i'm one of these people that's a lifetime cyclist who yeah. just i just like riding my bike um so i was you know i started a little bit at university just just taking the piss really you know having fun going out bashing myself like not really like training but still taking it you know still doing good number of hours work, taking it quite seriously uh, but i never really enjoy the racing side of it it doesn't really turn me on quite a lot it's you know who cares like yeah. i get everything i need out of cycling from the training from riding, riding but then yeah, like yeah. Which is, it's funny, you get the different people, like what turns people on. I like, obviously had Dan on the podcast a few days ago, weeks ago, whatever it was. Yeah. He absolutely hates training. He does not like it. <laughs> no, <laughs> like, as, so as soon as he retires, he is not riding his bike. Like, yeah. but he, he loves racing and he loves winning. And that's what, that's what, you know, gets him going. That's what gets him up in the morning. Yeah. Um, whereas for me, it's, it's a lot more about the sort of the enjoyment and the self-satisfaction I can get from riding a bike. Yeah. But um, it's obviously evolved because obviously when you're in an environment around for highly competitive athletes that, you know, do have that attitude, you're like, oh, yeah. yeah. And, um, you, you know, you want a bit of that. But I still I still think for me, it's about enjoying it. And it's, it's bad to say, but it's more about like proving my self-worth. But, you know, like I'm actually quite good at this, you know, rather than like I want to win. It's just I want to prove to myself that I can do what I think I can do. Yeah. Um, which is probably a long way around saying I like riding a bike. <laughs> no that, no that's awesome yeah because it's kind of yeah. it's kind of interesting how you how all of you guys got started because it's like you know you hear the story a hundred times where it's like dan shoots you a text message shoots this guy a text message and it's a bunch of misfits and it all come together but really i just know where that starts so it's not really knowing the background of like i guess charlie like the tanfields they were in the program mm -hmm. as kids right? and, absolutely and you know in america like 
you you get put into a program you can kind of come in and out but it seems like in great britain once you're out of that program no matter what age you were like you get mm. one shot to come in but if you're out you're out and and that's kind of what we saw but um you know and just speaking on that it sounds like you're getting your opportunity to ride with gb and was that affected due to the coronavirus or is like how did how did you even get involved that way <laughs> um well yes so I've never been on any, you know, national governing body, you know, to mess, you know, not, not had a, what's the, even the tears down below that, whatever you call it, like county level, um, yeah. nothing. Um, I'm, I've come to it quite late. I sort of start, did, did, took it reasonably serious at university. Like I won quite a few sort of university championships, which sounds very, very, imp I won 13 golds at the Bucks University, but that is actually not very good. <laughs> <laughs> that just means that I went to a lot of races and I had kit. <laughs> yeah, you showed up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right Got a lot of participation medals. Um, but you know, like it's you know, you go back to that university level, and it is there is some ridiculous stuff. Like me and Ryan Owens. Fun fact for you all: uh, you know, Ryan Owens, man one for GBs, ridiculously quick. But uh, yeah, we did team sprint together back in the day. And, uh, oh man, university champs. I think we were doing like fourteen fives or something. Jeez. Team sprint. <laughs> like we were yeah. flying. Like. Yeah. Uh, but um, so I did that, and obviously you come into the the hoop stuff happened. You know what was KGF originally? Yeah. And um, I, you know we've we've had all this to and fro in the media about give us our opportunity. We should, you know, why aren't we in GB? Blah 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 blah. And a lot of that was, you know, it was Dan. Oh, we've frozen, I think. I don't know. You, you're just no, being very I'm serious. Just, I'm just Sorry. I'm that in <laughs> right now. He's but... he's involved. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, so there's obviously this big uproar about, you know, why isn't Charlie in it? Why isn't Dan in it? Why isn't John in the program? You know, he's, these, you know, really good riders that are getting results. And at all that time, I really wasn't good enough, like, to be honest. Like, yeah. I had a few injuries that had got me, you know, you know, got a long, hurt my progress, you could say. Um, yeah. You know, broke my collarbone, ruptured my ACL. So that was basically two years where I wasn't really good enough to do it. I'd say only in the last sort of 12, well, probably further now, you know, 16 months, I'd say, that I've actually got to a level that I'd say I'm good enough to be considered for the squad. Um, and luckily, uh, they are not doing as well as they could do. Because yeah. obviously it's, it's, you know, it's national governing bodies are really simple when you put it down. If the, if the team aren't performing, they'll look elsewhere. If they're performing, they won't. Yeah. Um, and luckily for me, they're looking for a rider to, you know, potentially has my sort of characteristics of a sort of man one, man two. Um, and, you know, I've got a good, good start, good kilo. Um, I showed at uh, nationals, uh, I can do a good IP. Um, yeah. So I've you know, got potential to do the length. Um, but obviously the, some, of the, some of the fans won't actually know that I've never actually finished Team Pursuit, which is a bit of a tricky I knew one. That. <laughs> I knew that. So, yeah. Um, like... So how, what's hmm. the furthest you've gone in a Team Pursuit? Furthest I've gone is 2.75 kilometers, which was at nationals two years ago when Charlie had a mechanical, had a magnet stuck in his wheel. So you had um, to go. So I had to go. But it was, it was <laughs> I, like, I'll, I'll send you the link to the video afterwards. It's, it's, it's bad. So like, I, I've done my long turn. I've yeah. got half a lap to go. And all I hear from behind me is, get off the front, Johnny. And I'm like, I'm going real well. Like, <laughs> oh, is that where you were blown all over the fucking track where there's like two? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, like I, I hit get off the front, and what's your first instinct on that? It's like okay, <laughs> like, <laughs> like that's not one of the calls, Dan. <laughs> um, so I swing up, and the next thing I know, I see Charlie next to me. I'm like, oh shit, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is, is not going yeah. well. But um, yeah, it's it's an interesting power file. If you ever want to do a critical power test, that's how you achieve it. Um, I bet, man. Yeah, yeah. And, and it felt like a long, long time, but actually, if you look at the video, it wasn't. That long. It wasn't that long. <laughs> no, no, no. But. No, so that's cool. the first i've gone um so yeah. yet yet we'll put a yet on there what's the what's the um, furthest you've gone yet in a world cup though like once you guys have had your shit together because mm. i mean it seems like you guys didn't only like yeah you guys were fast when you were kgf but it's like every year you guys took a leap i mean just like just like any other national team um so what's the furthest you think you've gone since then like once uh, distance wise in a race i'm actually done the same very yeah. consistently like right. distance wise okay. but the big but on the end of that was it's the delivery velocity so yeah. for everyone I, I start man two um down as a lap and a quarter then i do 
an unspecified number of laps because it's it's very much in team pursuit it's all about delivery velocity yeah so obviously every you know if i'm if i'm accelerating on man one you know everyone in the line is absorbing that extra power so then you know it's wasted energy for everyone yeah. so if i you know if i get to the end of my race and i'm parking i'm slowing down it means the guy behind me and all them have got to accel- re-accelerate back up to their speed and it just kills them it's yeah. Yeah, you, you've you've done it. You know what happens if you fuck it up. <laughs> no, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 it's pretty drastic. Yeah. yeah, it fucks everything up. And luckily, I've only had yeah. to do it like two or three times. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's something you need experience and practice on. Cause like, we look back at the KGF days, and I remember the first couple of races I was doing, you know, five laps, and it was like. Yeah, did, did, did you park Johnny? I was like, ah, oh, maybe, maybe a bit, like a little bit, but I don't think it that was. And then obviously we had to get Tip around the next World Cups because he got dropped in Poland, unfortunately. Yeah. So then it was like, well, Johnny, can you do an extra lap? I was like, well, let's go for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is, if you think about it, it's like, I've not actually, I've got to do 620 watts for an extra seven, eight seconds. It's like, well, that didn't get that overnight, you know? Like, no, so you sure. look back at some of those files and it's like, oh, shit. But, um, so like the first year, I was doing five and a half and parking it, delivering at 14.7. And we didn't know because we didn't have split. You know, we didn't have the graphs we have now. We didn't have all yeah. the support that Dan's helped develop for us. And it was one of the big sort of, for my performance anyway, was massive. Uh, all that side that he gave me and also the, some of the graphs rules Royce worked with us for. Um, yeah, so the second year, I was I'll come back from a, my ACL, which is a bit, bit, of, a, bit of a bummer. Um, and again, it was, you know, five five and a half on a good day but yeah. the speed was quite maintained yeah. um, and finally this year I've done a really I got well you say you say you really stepped it up but I, actually, actually what I've done is I've just become a lot more consistent in it yeah um, and this the splits are yeah you, you look on test side it's pretty pretty good I think um, in Brisbane Brisbane in the first rounds is probably my best ride I've ever done and it was you know just riding on 13.8s and then delivered on 13.6 which is pretty Jeez, yeah Assist for myself. I had big morale that day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's pretty <laughs> wicked. Yeah, that's super. But, nice. um, it still progresses because we sort of learn that probably wasn't the best way for us to ride at all. Um, without giving away too many of the trade secrets, that acceleration, like we said, it's that you know, fuck the guys behind us. So yeah, doesn't you know? It's it's a very very difficult role. It's it's you don't get much credit for what you do, but you can either make or break the race for everybody else. Um, yeah you know how you how you control that pace you can either set the guys up behind to go well because that's your job effectively isn't it it's it's we're trying to get the guys behind us as deep into the race as we possibly can as fresh as we can um but it, I, I i really like the role it suits me quite a lot but yeah i don't I, think I i'll be able too. to do it when i, when I got mm. to test it out a bit the thing is is that you know everybody's got to buy into it and then on top of everybody buying into it everybody has to know the same feeling so mm. you have to know the feeling they have to know the feeling behind you when they feel that it is slowing up is it actually slowing up or is he just settling in you know trying to get that gauge and that idea because it's it's a different kind of ride man and like honestly we came to poland and we pretty much showed up in poland and it was like hey this is what we're doing we're gonna we're gonna listen to ashton and we're just gonna give it a shot and see how it works and really I, it didn't feel like we had enough time because it would be like we no train way. it and then on race day you know the nerves and everything it's just it didn't come together well because like i always felt like i was fresh i was dropping them off at um i think when i i was i started out at like 14 fours and then dropped them off at 14 two but that was only with i think i think i went four laps and it wasn't enough like i still had room to still maybe go 14.3 into a 14.2 or even a 14.3 to 14.3 mm-hmm. gives them another lap. But the guy behind me has that idea of like, oh, we're settling. It's slowing. Mm-hmm. Get out of the way. Mm-hmm. And so it's it's a weird effort to gauge for sure, just for the two times I did it. So the fact that you've been mm-hmm. doing it for what, three years now? Yeah, yeah. Pretty insane. It's, yeah. I mean, it's it's funny because I, I say to people that it's a, I go to these World Cups and I'm never actually, you know, it, it, it's a sub-maximal effort. I do a team pursuit that's sub-maximal. Like, yeah. you try and explain that to people because it's obviously, you look at my power files, they're the least impressive looking things like you can ever do. And you always, if you've done a good ride, you think, I could have done an extra bit, you know, I could have done yeah, an extra yeah. half lap. That's how yeah. you've got to fit your B on it. It's not worth risking that extra half lap. Half lap. Yeah, and yeah. yeah, and that little monkey in your head that's like, right, you've done five laps now, Johnny. It's time <laughs> yeah. to get off the front. <laughs> yeah, cause um, it's because it's, it's one of those things because you're like, could I go an extra half? But it's the matter of that like quarter 
or even mm -hmm. like you know one you know one sixteenth whatever of that lap where it's like oh i feel good and it's it's crazy how quick it goes i feel amazing to oh god i'm fucked you oh know? it's a weird effort you start and you're just yeah. like all i think for the first two laps is just don't touch the pedals don't yeah. do it just don't yeah. do it <laughs> just keep yeah. rolling just keep rolling yeah oh uh -huh. well see, but, um, so are you gonna so they're gonna try to do that for gb or or can you can you not release uh, the secrets it's like kind of like under wraps uh, well, I, I, I don't know is the honest answer on that one. Um, obviously, they're training me up to try and do changes and ride in the line. And that's something I've been doing the last couple of sessions, which is it's, it's a new new ball game for me. Um, yeah. I think I think it's something I need to learn as it will it will progress me as an athlete. I think, um, you know, just because you, you can get the feel of how everyone li rides. And it's just a bit of a not being able to do it when you're in a squad that's so big and has so many variable options, it's, you know, it's, it's not good, but, um, you know, it's, it's a nice new challenge for me. I'm, I'm physically in a position. I can actually do those sort of things. So it's quite, a, it's quite a tricky skill to learn. If you haven't, I think people underestimate, like I remember when I had the first chat with the head coach, I was like, so, uh, I really haven't done many of this. <laughs> you know, and, he, yeah. and he's just like, Oh, you know, like, he's like, no, 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 no. I've done like maybe five K ever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's, it's, it's you know, it's going to take time. I mean, I'm hoping, I mean, I think the technical details of my trial is quite open-ended. Um, yeah. It will be, hopefully, I've asked for a, a race run out because obviously I'm, some people are good in training, some people are good in races, and I, I seem to always find that extra, you know, 5%, whatever you want to call it. But, uh, yeah, yeah and it's nice, nice to experience that. I think, it, I think it's, you know, that's what I said to them. It's, if, if you bring me in for a week, for a month, then it's, you know, you're just, you're just giving, you know, you're just taking a box. Whereas yeah. if you actually honestly think I'm good enough and honestly think I'm the man to come help out and lift the quality of the squad, I need, you know, five, six months. I need to build relationships. Cause I, I've never been, I've never had a coach, Yeah. you know? I, oh yeah. yeah. And, so you've never, cause that and, was a question of mine. Cause I was, mm. I, I was talking to Ashton and Ashton was like, dude, being with these hoop guys is great. Cause you literally just show up and everybody just fucks off, gives their own space and does their own thing <laughs> comes together. And it's like a fucking yeah, orchestra yeah. and it's awesome. Mm. So, so you've never had a, what is that like having a coach now? I, well, it's, it's kind of a bit tricky cause it's, I do have a coach, but also yeah. I'm allowed to do my own training. <laughs> okay. If that makes any sense at all. So as a, the rules of being a guest rider, which is what I am. Um, so obviously I'm not getting lost ring funding or anything. I'm, I'm effectively a volunteer. Mm. um yeah and you a get hobby like cyclist. a cool yellow shirt and on the back of it it's like <laughs> water boy or something or I, should, I, should, I should introduce <laughs> that yeah no i've got yeah no kit i ride my own stuff it's all i'm which brings a whole world of you know stress involved as well it's, yeah it's only very fast because of his kit it's like well what do you want me to do <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, playing yeah. by the rules i'm you know i'm i'm, yeah. I'm played with but um no so it's 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 interesting. It's good to learn from them. Um, the, the progress I've made as an athlete over the next five months, I don't think I would have, over the last five months rather, I don't think I would have made that without their input. So I think yeah. it's that as a, you know, it's, it's we're, 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 we're singing from the same hymn sheet, whatever your expression is. It's, you know, yeah. we actually like, I look at the training I do versus the training the boys in the squad do. It's pretty fucking similar. Yeah. You know, it's, we ride a bike, sometimes we go hard, sometimes we go easy, yeah. <laughs> and sometimes we go to the gym. <laughs> and there you but, guys um, go, Johnny Well is now coaching, so if you guys want to reach out to him, he'll tell you to ride hard and tell you to ride easy. The end. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, I think the, we, we, we could have another podcast on how people try to complicate training, but it, it, I think it <laughs> very, very much is quite a lot that, and it's, yeah, uh, yeah. everyone's looking for the little 1% of what training effort you can do that will make you better, whereas... I think the reality the best thing you can do is go to bed at 10 o'clock get yeah. nine ten hours sleep have a nap in the day eat good food be in a nice environment like that's have good morale you know it's where it comes from like that's yeah, yeah. that that's what makes you go fast like i don't care what special training you're doing or altitude or fucking doing backflips occlusion like whatever what do you know i don't care like as long as you've got the basic sorted you're going to improve as an athlete you know, if you're a motivated dude you're going to be pushing yourself hard hard enough so if anything, a coach's job is to pull you back, which is, yeah. you know, it's interestingly, it's one of the big things that I've done is for the last six months, you know, I've proper polarized how like I used to, we, you know, there's a, there's a tendency in Hoobland to just go fast all the time. Um, yeah. Whereas I think Dan's the classic example of that because he's, 
because he's doing you know 50 million jobs at once you know he's only got like 35 seconds a day to train yeah. so he has to go full gas when he's on the bike you know it's yeah. like that's out of a necessity and then it's that you know i think a lot of people are you're a slave to the environment that you're in so you see that happening in the corner i see dan like whenever he touches a bike if every if all the fans out there go on dan strava account he is the like it, it doesn't make any sense he's either sat there on his bike like twiddling his thumbs doing 10 watts on his phone messaging someone or he's doing full gas efforts there's no in between there's no like I'll, I'll just i'll just warm up at you know zone two for a bit it doesn't, doesn't exist <laughs> like yeah bless him but you see you sort of see that and i'm like well maybe i should do that yeah um and it's it's, it's really taken the input of the guys in the uh great britain team to help me out to see another side and i think I've, it's, it's working yeah so. well that's awesome man so like speaking of that and like now having a coach and I guess with coronavirus that's pushed off your world record attempts. So mm. what's, what's kind of your goals now going forward? I mean, cause it, I mean, if you would have asked maybe in October when we all found out there was going to be no more trade teams, it sounded mm. like a lot of you guys were switching the ambitions to the road slash retiring or just being like, fuck, I don't know what to do. <laughs> so, I think retiring is a very, very over the top word for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can you retire for something that you don't get paid for? Like, <laughs> well, retiring means hang up, hang up the bike, quit racing, and really yeah. quit wasting your money and investing. <laughs> well, there you go. Well, I don't think it's wasted. I've, I've, I've had a lot of fun, yeah. but um, no, I think it, it was. I, I was kind of all in for this block of Bolivia world records, and it was, you know, in the back of my mind for the last sort of couple of months beforehand, it was. I think there might be an opening on GB. Like that's something I'd love to do. Like I've never, I've never worn a GB jersey. Like, which is, which would be pretty special for me. Like that's you know you see, for me I'm a diehard fan. Like I'm you know I'm serious serious fanboy. Um, I remember watching. I was saying this like the other day. It's I remember watching the 2008 World Champs in Manchester with Ed Clancy like riding around. And then it's like I'm doing team pursuit with that guy. <laughs> like, I, yeah, dude, I am. I am. I'm, I'm definitely on that same spectrum. I am. Yeah, I'm yeah. Ed Clancy super fan. And yeah, I've he's actually, a really, really nice guy. Yeah, yeah I've well, got a lot of time for him. I've, I've messaged him, so hopefully he responds. Aww. I know he hates social media, but I'm trying to get. Him he does hate the social media. So <laughs> yeah, that's awesome, man. Um, but yeah, so so I mean, but didn't you didn't you go to Commonwealth Games with them or? <laughs> Uh, well, that's that's Team Scotland. So that's ah. slightly slightly different. Um, okay. I am Scottish, despite uh, my accent. Um, uh, yeah, I was about to say it's, I can still understand. You, <laughs> but... <laughs> um, yeah, so I did Commonwealth Games. I just did the kilo there, um, yeah. which was a a bit of a missed opportunity as well. It's, it's probably one of the I kind of pride myself in performing well in races. Yeah. You know, it's like I will, I've I've got a very high. I may not win. But I like I get everything I've got out of myself. Um, yeah. uh, fuck that kilo, big style. Oh. I, I, yeah, yeah. Well, it, it was one of these mistakes of like it's when I first discovered gym, gym. It was you know we're we're like like ah oh, my muscles like this. You know, it's, yeah. we spent sort of the four months leading up to it. We started. There's a really good gym coach called Paul Coyle up there, up in Scotland. He sort of really showed me the ropes, and he you know became like a sort of mentor figure to me. Um, yeah, yeah. Really bought into it. Um, and I responded really well to it. And I was just going faster and faster on the start, which is my big weakness. Um, people think I'm a good starter, but actually it's my last lap that I'm good at in a kilo. Mm -hmm. um, and we ended up just getting a bit carried away, I'd say. Um, you know, we started doing, I was kiloing on about 112 inches at the start. And then it was like, well, you're the same speed on 115. So we'll go over 115. And then like three weeks later, it was like, well, 120 inches is the same, you know, it's just... <laughs> Like for me at the time, it was when I nail the start, I'm the same speed for the first half, the same speed for the lap on whatever gear I go on. Yeah. But the but the next lap is significantly faster and I'm on a bigger gear. Yeah. So it was a it was a, you know, you think, you know, I was surrounded by an environment of people that were pushing you in that you know way of bigger is more. Um, I wish at the time I sort of sat back and been like. Well, why don't we try 112 again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's see how this goes. <laughs> um, I was just, it just, uh, it's really silly. Like, we'd done all our starts on the Brisbane track on the, which one is it? The home straight. Yeah. And I raced on the back straight. And the way the track is, it's the, 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 the when I actually started, it shoots you down the track, like, yeah. really aggressively. And obviously, I hadn't done it one start there and it did it. 
I went over three pads in the first bend and I just remember thinking like, fuck, well, <laughs> I buggered this up. Like, um, I mean, I came, what did I come fourth? I think, but like I did, like I did do a really good ride considering like, which is the disappointing thing. You know, it's like, I could have, yeah. I wouldn't have, wouldn't have won. I don't think I would have been close on second, but it's still, you know, it's, it's a long way to go. And it's, you know, it goes back to the whole like pride. Like I'm, I'm proud to be Scottish. You know, it's when you're, when you grow up, in that environment, you see these Commonwealth athletes. I remember talking about it when I was, you know, you're a kid swimming away and it's like, oh, that's cool. It's on TV. Like it, it means a lot to me, you know? Yeah, that's awesome. Um, and to go away and get a medal would have been, you know, a good, good one. It didn't help that my, my fiance won two medals. So that's potential. Who's your fiance? Uh, Nia Evans. Oh, I thought you forgot her name for a second. It's okay. It's okay. She, she, she won't. Um... You know, what's awesome about you hoop guys. It's like, it's like, honestly, not only did you start a team that like, okay, yeah, you got cool results. Yeah. You guys won't go fast mm. as fuck, but it's almost like you guys got your life together. Like you all found girls <laughs> that all like I, when I was interviewing Dan, I was like, dude, what house are you in? Like, it looks like mm. you're in the middle of Spain in this beautiful home like just live in the dream like yeah <laughs> it seems like it seems like who's done a lot more than just you know make you guys go fast it seems like that's true i'd say i'm engaged i've got i live with my fiance we have a puppy like that that's oh man that is a yeah. step up like that is alive. <laughs> technically <laughs> well well this, this is the wonderful thing like we talk uh so like i've never been on gb but nia um she's that one European team suit stuff and second yeah. at Worlds this year. Um, she's the one that got her ass out in the Madison event, if anyone saw. Ooh, yeah, the, 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 the sneaky little American girl, I can't remember what her name was, gave us some grief on Twitter or something after. Like, she put like a snide post up. I was like, oh, you've picked on the wrong person. Like, she's going to fucking kill you next time she sees you. Uh, she, she, she crashed by like mistakenly going in between or something. Like, it was just a silly mistake. You know, like, these things happen in races. And an, and an American called her out? Like mm. Madison rider? Yeah, oh, yeah. Huh. Yeah. That could literally um, only be like two people because Jen Valente, I don't think, has ever even downloaded Twitter. Well, it's not that one. We'll put it out there. And then, <laughs> she better watch out. She she she's gonna uh, get uh whoever whoever's into listening. The fence. She's oh, an aggressive lassie, I'll tell you that. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you wanna make friends in this sport, I think. Um for sure, for sure. <laughs> better to be But yeah, no, Dan's deeply in love with Joss. Yeah, they're, they're going to be cute couple our record holders in a few weeks time. Mm. That'd be nice. Oh, yeah. Jacob is deeply in love with um, Leah, who's also an amazing cyclist. Like we've all got amazing cyclists. Charlie yeah. is still single, unfortunately. Uh, so if, if you have any uh, recommendations. Yeah, yeah. We'll, six we'll six foot three. World ex world champion. Well, I know a few of them. Does he like American team pursuit women? Not really. Just likes riding really. his bike. Uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, past that, I don't know anyone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, we, we, we tried. We tried. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or maybe, we could, maybe this is where I get like a Bumble or Tender sponsorship for this, uh, for this podcast. Yeah, maybe. Let's talk about the sponsorship. <laughs> Are you, right. you going to superimpose that over the top? Yeah, yeah. Like the... Just Bumble just comes across the top <laughs> <laughs> well I, I was i was i listened to your podcast on the i, I did my research i listened oh. to four four individual unique hits you just received from me Sweet. um who did i listen to i listened to chloe digart's one she's um one. she's she's yeah insane. she's insane she's, well I, I she's i i i it was quite interesting because i wanted to get like a vibe of what this was would be like and you sort of yeah. see what people talk and you get you you got three very very different personalities like she just wants to fucking win, doesn't she? Yeah, she like, doesn't like the bike, I don't think. She's no. like pure alpha male, but a female. I, I, that's probably going to throw some sexist comment in there. I'm sorry. No, Please revert right. all comments well. to John. But, you know, like, I got a lot of, t- <laughs> got a lot of time for that. Like, yeah. like, respect on that. Like, she knows yeah. what she wants, and she's going to go out and get it. 100%. Then you had TJ Hubbard. Yep, there we go. Yeah. I, I actually looked up a photo of him after listening to the podcast and I'm so happy he looks the way he sounds. Oh, like yeah. he's like the puka that's, shells and all, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um like yeah, he, he has a friend called Snake or is it Spider or something? I can't like Oh his sponsor, Spider. Ah uh, he, he, he yeah. made it sound like oh, I've got you know, I met my well, dude Spider. <laughs> well yeah, because he met this guy at a uh, I guess at like a photo shoot or whatever. And now he mm. has, he's like one of the first cyclists with his own shoe line. 
Okay. Oh, no, he, he, he mentioned that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's pretty cool. Um, he said radical and like there's all sorts of like proper American like oh, yeah. hipster well, that was, words were popped in. That was one of the things that when I first met Dan, Dan like mm. mocked me like right away. Like, but I think it was just because Dan's he's like, a smart guy. But like being mm. around you guys, like he immediately was just like he picked up on it because he was like, I would do this with any of my other friends. So I'm just like, <laughs> oh, thanks, dude. And he was like, oh, thanks, dude. And I was just like, yeah, I deserve that. <laughs> Fair play. Yeah. Um, and who else do we have? P- Peter Stedner. Peter Stedner. He's, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. One. Yeah. But then, like, I, all of these guys, I was thinking, like, I have, I have nothing like this. You talked about vans. I was like, well, I don't have a fucking van. I don't even drive a car. <laughs> yeah. Well, a lot of the people don't have. What are we going to talk about? A lot of people haven't been drinking coffee on mm. the podcast, but those are two of my main sponsors that have. Will, will I get some coffee for participating in the podcast? Yeah, dude. I'll ship you out some coffee. You know, oh, sponsored athlete, I am. Yeah, there we yeah, go. dude. I'll ship you some coffee, and then because. The reason why another per- people person that I want on the podcast is I want Philip Hines and those guys. Oh, yeah. They're just releasing their coffee. Like their, their coffee. Five rings. Yeah. I've, I had a, I've had a bit of it. It's quite tasty. Yeah, that's pretty dope. So nice. I'd love to get them on. But, um, mm. but anyways, so yeah, like, I mean, the whole point of this podcast was just to like bring every different personality <laughs> from far and in between. Because like if you listen to TJ's and then go to Steve Cullen, who's like, this director of this crit team here in America, you have TJ who's like, dude, just feel with the vibes, my bro. <laughs> and then you have this other guy who's like, I'm a warrior when I enter the crit. I die <laughs> in the corner and I fight with my sword. And it's like this whole thing. And I was like, this is rad. Like, I love this. This is yeah, awesome, yeah. you know? So yeah. that being said, um, you know, we, we chatted a bit about, you know, you with GB, we chatted a bit about your goals. Do you have any road ambitions? I mean, you don't make it past two and a half K, but do you have any road ambitions like time trial? I feel like you'd be great yeah. in time trial. Yeah. I mean, it's something that I've, um, I've not really done much road before because I always thought it's just not the right thing to do, especially in the environment we had of uh, KGF and who bought bike works, you know, we've got four riders and you know, we need four riders to do a team suit. So if, if I crash and I break my collarbone, then that's, that's not good for the team. Um, yeah. And because it doesn't really interest me much back in the day. Um, I think now I think I'd do it. You know, well, I said I'd do it. I've got a, you know, I've got a TT bike now. I've got it all set up. I did, did one the other day, which was fun. Did what did right. Um, but I think it'll be something that will, especially if this GB thing goes off. Um, I think it's another, it's not something I'm super interested in, but I also think it's something that will improve my team seating. So yeah. it's something to focus on there. Um, and it's, it's all the basics of, you know, all my training is about boosting my threshold and getting be- getting more aero, holding that position well. And it's yeah, like, sure. well, that's that's a time trial. Yeah, for sure. Um, obviously, my, my biggest disadvantage is being a slightly larger dude. Mm-hmm. Um, so like, whenever the road goes slightly up, it doesn't doesn't work well, well for me. Um, so from that point of view, it's I just I don't know. I I, I don't I don't fancy it to be honest. Okay. No, like, yeah, I, th- I think I'm starting to head towards that route. Like I tried to do everything at once, you know, me being 300 pounds when I first started, I got this opportunity to do everything because I wasn't good right off the bat because I was still fat as fuck. And then yeah. I lost a ton of weight and I'm still fat as fuck in comparison to everybody <laughs> else in the world. Um, but I think for this next quad, I'm definitely going to try to go full gas team pursuit. The only thing I focus on. Yeah. Um, but but I think that, that works. I think there's there's a lot of there's there's a lot of average people out there. Whereas I think if you find one niche and specialize in it, you can actually yeah. be you know I don't want to be an average TT, an average road, an average track. I want to be an absolute weapon on the track. You know that's yeah, what's, for sure. that's all I care about. That's and it's where for me the funding opportunities will be. It's where the race opportunities will be. But more importantly, it's what I really enjoy. Mm-hmm. So I'm kind of lucky in that that my physiology suits what I enjoy doing. So. Being that Dan's podcast that I did with him was probably our highest viewed podcast. Um, <laughs> that was Dan, um, Dan's mom, Dan, <laughs> Dan's physio, <laughs> Dan's dad, <laughs> the 50 other people that Dan messaged saying you have to watch. This. <laughs> but there was a comment in there that you got arrested in Belarus and I've had my, well, arrested soft term, but I had my experiences with the Belarusian 
mafia slash military slash militia. So how did, <laughs> how did that go down for you and shake down with you? Yeah, no, I'm a, I'm a hardened criminal. I just yeah. go around the world causing yeah, the mischief. The fact that you're still alive to tell the story is pretty interesting. <laughs> well, it's funny. Like, we were actually, it, I didn't think anything of it until we applied for our, well, we went, we didn't have to get a visa because they changed the rules for entry where it's traditionally it was seven days you have to get a visa and they changed it to two weeks and you don't, get, don't have to get a visa. So for, we didn't have to get a visa this time, long story short. Yeah. So the first time I found out that I was actually allowed in the country was when I'd got through passport control. And I was just absolutely shitting myself. Like, <laughs> it's like, okay, just act casual. <laughs> but um, yeah, so it was the, it was the first time out there. We, we just won the team pursuit the day before, just a, yeah. a name drop on that. And um, so we, I was going back to the track to start packing up my bike. Um, something you guys on national governing bodies probably won't understand is that we pack our bikes or at least oh yeah the, there we go when you're, when you're riding four minutes you pack your bikes, <laughs> all right that's, that's, that's totally fair um yes yeah, so i was doing this i like I, you look right you look left there's a big busy road across it's like ah oh, like there's no one there just go for it it's just it's just what you do like yeah. jaywalking is the usa term of it, it is but um true, yeah yeah, is out it, of no elsewhere. I've set myself up. I haven't got a fucking clue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, this unmarked police car pulls up behind me, like proper slams on, like, like we're talking like TV esque. <laughs> Two guys come out of the car. They grab me, throw me on the ground. My little Rasputin. So if you won, you got given a, like a little terracotta Rasputin doll that I'd carefully wrapped in a towel, walking it over to the smashed, gone. Rest oh, in peace. Shit yeah um anyway they picked me up like proper throw me into the back of the car like pure police brutality-esque uh all the while screaming at me in belarusian um and my belarusian is not great to be honest uh, yeah yeah it's not good uh, so i'm sat in the middle middle seat of this car on my right hand side there's a policeman on my left hand side in the police you know in the car they're both shouting at me and at the time i'm like what do I do? <laughs> like, I remember my first instinct being, I need to ring Ellie. Now, Ellie's our 16-year-old team manager. <laughs> <laughs> Child labor laws. <laughs> and then my second thought was, what the fuck is she going to do? <laughs> Bless. Uh, yeah, and I, I, I dissolved this, the situation by getting my medal out of my bag. Yeah. Like, they asked for my passport. And I and just, I just had my... I had my medal in my little bag with it. And I just like sort of like showed it in their faces, and like that, the English came in. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I had to never. fill out some forms. They took photos of me, and then they sent me on my way. They didn't get. They didn't charge you or anything. Like you didn't have to pay anything. No. Yeah. I was I expecting had... like an email or a letter or something, but no, no, I think you're they just. just... In the the watch database so all the yeah. views are going to come from the belarus like i'm going to have like a whole belarusian population now that's why because <laughs> i i like cask just started sponsoring me and they wanted me to wear the helmets in the world cup for glasgow so i went to the i had to go to the airport from glasgow yeah. that, that's not how you pronounce it buddy <laughs> pronounce it for me glasgow glasgow go. Glasgow. so you just drop the w it's, it's just one word mate glasgow glasgow yeah, there we go. That was, that was a very good. Um, <laughs> yeah, let's hear the American accent. Let's hear it. Because uh, Dan dude. had a good one when he did it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't perform. I'm not a performer. Don't perform well. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but I had to go to, I had to go pick up these fucking helmets. And I, they took me back into this like alleyway with a bunch of military and I had to pay taxes. Three hours later, you know, I get sent over there from some, I don't know, like, welcome center that has taken like their taxi has taken me over there and she's like my translator nobody will speak english to me i like <laughs> pretty much walk through airport security but at this point she's been happy with me this whole time finally two hours later we get out of there and i'm just like all right i got the box i just have to call said taxi company and she's talking to me in english and she's super happy and then her phone rings and she's like no and she starts yelling in belarusian back and forth and she's like phones for you and I like answer it, and it's this lady who's like, you are not allowed to use our people as personal translators. You must pay us, or you will be arrested. There will be cops at the front of the airport. And I was just like, oh, fuck. All right, well, here we go. You know, like, I don't know what's about to happen, how much they're going to ask me for. So I get in there. There's no cops. The two ladies look at me, and they're, like, talking back and forth. And 
the one universal word is idiot. Like they say idiot in Belarusian, but like I can understand it. You know what I mean? It's like idioto. It's like I can understand that, dude. And but then they were just like twenty uh, Belarusian. And I was like, that's it. That's all you want. And they're like, yep. And so they swipe my card. And as I'm about to leave, I was going to call a taxi, and they're like, wait, why don't you use our taxis? And I was just like, well, because the guy who just gave me a ride up here told me to call this specific taxi driver. And he literally set me up for this. And she's like, no, 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 I'll get you a taxi to be, you know, 40, 40 rubles. You'll be good. You'll be ready to go. And I was like, all right, this dude shows up like bumping Skrillex in a green sedan, like smoke billowing out. And he's like, like cracked out. And he's like, come on, John, yes, come on. And he grabs my box <laughs> and like throws it in the back. And I'm just like, I'm highly uncomfortable. He's like, I'm not going to take your card. Like, I don't take card. I only take card. And he's just like wigging the fuck out. And at this point, I'm just like so exhausted. I get out and there's just like this lady that's like serving coffee. And I'm like, hey, can you can you just call this place for me, please? And like this guy's like now yelling at me and trying to get in the fight. Mm. He's pissed I won't get in his car. Mm. Finally, I get in a taxi. The guy's super nice. I fall asleep. And literally, I just wake up to this dude who essentially wakes me up and goes, we are here, sir. <laughs> and I was like, oh, fuck. I never want to do that again. So if you're listening, that's what I'll do for your helmets. <laughs> yeah, it was awful, man. So before we wrap this podcast up so I can let you go to sleep, I want to hear your wildest Ashton Lambie story because we shipped that trader off to, uh, to, to you guys in Darby, and we were hoping that we would get some tips and tricks, but really all we found out is that we were too big and we can't get that arrow. So um, what's your wildest Ashton Lambie story, and like, what was your first impression of meeting this guy? Um, it's a tricky one because you, you gave me some prep on this. I tried to like, we normally do the, we, we normally do these podcasts and I, and, and you do, what happens is you start the record button, you talk yeah. shit for about an hour yeah. and then afterwards you're like, Oh, what did I say? <laughs> <laughs> so like for this time I was like, you know what? I, I'm a, I'm a big shot now. I could be a GB athlete soon. I'm going to, I'm going to prep. Yeah. So I've written on some notes saying Ashton, his training is dog shit. That's about as far as I got. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think his training is dog shit? Like, okay, there's a, there's a bit of a backstory behind this one. So he went, uh, he, he's, how do you describe him? Like, he's just like a four-year-old boy. He is a very like he's, four-year-old boy. And he's he, very, very immature. Very innocent. Yeah. Very, very so, innocent. You put him in an environment in England where everything is wonderful and exciting, dude. <laughs> it's like, look at these teaspoons. They're like big spoons, but little. <laughs> um, you guys probably don't have teaspoons in America. They're like, no, I drink coffee. Yeah, I drink tea. yeah. He, he brought back fifty teaspoons. Man. That's a thing. Like that. That's what he did. That was that was the first trip. But so the second trip, we went he's a by. Big time, he's a big time tourist, though. Like his family he's a, is he like a is. touristy family. Yeah, they, yeah. They love to go drink the scotch. Yeah, they love Mark. to go have like the pierogies in Poland. Like that's that's his mm. style. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So he he, he goes on this. He, he's done this research. He's staying in the house for a few weeks before the races, and he's like, he's going to do a session. He wants to go do this v, VO2 max session. Mm -hmm. uh, that you, if you can see the air asterisks on the uh, <laughs> words on the podcast. Um, it's not a VO2 max session. Um, <laughs> it's just a really shit threshold session, Ashton. Um, and it's not very good. I'll be honest. Like, <laughs> What was the session? Oh, it was like 40 seconds on, 30 off or something weird and wonderful. But only like eight reps. And the reps weren't hard. But anyway, like the, the bit that got me, I remember like I'm a bit of a, like I like my training. You know, I do like, yeah. I set all the training for the team for three years. So I, I love this stuff. It's why it gets me excited. Yeah. Um, so I'm perving on his, on his Strava. I want to see what he's done. And I, and, I, and I clock that there's like a 35 minute gap between the first rep and the second rep. I'm just like, what? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> what actually had happened is he'd stopped at a yarn shop, which is like wool, like just prepared wool. He'd gone in, had a little chat with the owner, come away with, you know, three, four big things of yarn, stuffed him in his bike, and his, his fucking stupid bags he's got everywhere. And there's a puppy in the corner. And uh, yeah, then he just continued on as you do. Dude, I got to get my session done, man. See you later. <laughs> like, <laughs> that was pretty good. That's pretty good American accent right there. Oh, like, right. oh, come on. But oh, you look at some of the stuff that guy does. It's 
how's he gone fast? You know, yeah. it's one of these things like, oh, dude, like, <laughs> dude, but everybody it's... in America still asks the same. Like when he rocked up, we mm. and we were like getting to know him. We were just like, you know, being assholes like anybody else would be. Just a random dude just walks up wearing a Hawaiian t-shirt and whatever else. <laughs> and then yeah. sooner or later, he's riding us off the wheel in every session. Mm. It just gets further and further and further and further. And so it was just kind of like, well, I guess we just, we can't really make fun of him because we're yeah. faster <laughs> than him. So we really kind of got to learn from the guy, right? Yeah. So um, it's, it's curious. I mean, it goes, it goes full circle on um, where we started on the, you know, we talked about training. It doesn't actually matter what you do. Yeah. As long as you, in, you know, the stuff you do induces fatigue in a, sort of decent enough environment um but what i would say about him he's he's it takes balls to do what he's done you know he's um we remember when he was the first time we ever heard of him i think his i think marv was in the stands and he was talking to someone Good old and marv. then yeah and then you know suddenly we had an email hey i'm ashton i you know like this this guy had done nothing you know yeah he wasn't good like you guys had come I don't know. Not well, you hadn't done very well. Was the gist we of the email? We still haven't done very well. It's okay. I like how you you're trying to be really nice. <laughs> <laughs> I think you guys did. You did. You got stumbled on a bit. I think you could have done a lot better. Yeah. But well, it happens. But anyways, continue. it happens. But um, yeah, it takes balls to do that. To end up in the team and then to uproot, come over and try and do with us. Like the guys, he knows what he wants. Like we go back to Chloe Diga. He he knows what he wants. She knows what she wants, and he, he's willing to do whatever it takes to get it. And like, you've got to respect that. I think, um, yeah. I think that's his strongest suit, you know, strongest factor that he's got his characteristic, um, sure. which is pretty rare. And he's got some pretty weird stuff he does, but yeah, yeah he does. <laughs> but the dude wants to win. He um, does. He does want to win and he will do it, whatever it takes to make it happen. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, but anyways, man, I really appreciate your time and thank you so much for jumping on and clearing things up from the lies on the uh, the Dan podcast. If you haven't heard that already, please make sure you check down the link below. There's, there's no lies. I was just kidding. Um, but uh, but yeah, thanks again and uh, wish the best of luck to you and you know trying to crack into GB and hopefully that all works out. No worries. Thanks a lot. Right. Cheers.